Hey friend, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be giving you the A to Z on gouache. So in this video, I'm gonna show you different techniques and when and why to use gouache, how to use it. We're gonna do a very fun consistency exercise with gouache so you know all the things you need to know from A to Z about gouache so you can paint with this medium like a pro. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so the gouache set that I'm currently using, I'll recommend some other brands as well for you guys to try out. Um, but this one will link below. I just found it on Amazon. I don't even know the name. We have the link for it though in the description below. Um, and this is artist level gouache. So just like any kind of paint or medium, oil, acrylic, watercolor, there's gonna be student grade and professional grade or artist grade. And obviously there's going to be some differences between the two, artist grade being cheaper because there's more binding agents in it. Um, some artists might not be able to tell the difference or some artists might even prefer the student grade paint. However, there are gonna be some differences in consistency, the boldness or vibrancy of the actual pigment itself and also just the way it blends and whatnot. So test it out, um, student grade might be better for you budget wise. Um, but again, just keep in mind that professional or artist grade level does have a slight difference in the pigment quality. Um, but we'll link to the actual set that I use. I just have it in this cute jar that I also got from Amazon. We'll link to it. Um, and it has a full range of different colors in here that are pre-mixed that I like that are kind of, you know, different than your traditional colors. Um, but what is gouache? Gouache is an opaque water-based medium. So a lot of artists have referred to it as opaque watercolor. So if you're used to working with watercolor, this isn't a twist of your brain really. Like it's, it's pretty similar to working with watercolor in a lot of ways because it is water-based. The main difference is obviously going to be in the consistency. The more transparent or more water you add to a mixture with gouache, the consistency is gonna kind of be more irregular than something with watercolor. So if I were gonna do a background, let's say, I'm gonna get out my red gouache from the set. If I'm adding a lot of water to a mixture with red gouache, so I'm not gonna get too much of that pigment on my brush. It's gonna mostly be, it's gonna mostly be transparent. The consistency is something to watch for. You'll, sometimes with gouache, you'll get some streakiness. This is such a lovely red color, but you'll get a lot more streakiness with gouache than you would with watercolor. So this, is, this color is doing it quite nicely and it has pretty decent full coverage, but if you have a little bit more pigment on your brush with gouache because it's opaque, it's just gonna kind of sit more in the mixture and it's not gonna blend as smoothly or have as smooth of coverage as watercolor would. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to cover a full area uh, like a background or sky or something like that with gouache, it's gonna maybe have some streakiness to it. Watercolor might be better for that scenario depending on what you're painting. Another feature of gouache is that when it dries, it has this beautiful matte finish, kind of like a velvety matte finish. So you can, in certain scenarios with certain pigments, similar to watercolor, you can reactivate colors by adding water to it. Um, but you do wanna keep in mind that the majority of your gouache colors, when they dry, they're gonna dry more matte, making it look a slightly darker hue. So if you it, if it looks like a bright orangey red on paper, it's probably gonna dry a little bit darker. So just keep that in mind um, as you're painting with gouache. And that bold flat finish makes it great for landscapes or having more graphic look to your florals. The most important feature of gouache is that it is so easy to layer with because it is opaque. Um, I love layering with my lighter colors, I love adding white gouache to even my watercolors, my actual watercolor pigments in my palette to make them a little bit thicker and more opaque so I can layer on top of my darker background colors. So one thing to keep in mind when you are layering with gouache is you want to make sure that your underneath layer is completely dry, obviously. If it's not, it's gonna kind of create this blurry, muddy look to it. So if you want something to look really crisp, like you're adding 
details to trees or shadows or highlights in an eyeball, something like that, you wanna make sure that the eyeball or the tree, whatever you're layering on top of is completely dry first, and then you'll get a nice crisp, opaque layer to it. So let's talk about the ideal consistency. So I have a great consistency video on my channel for watercolor. And we're gonna talk about the same thing, but for gouache. So because gouache and watercolor are kind of similar, they're both um, water-based mediums, uh, there's going to be different effects or different reasons or techniques that you would want to use uh, more of like a tea-like consistency versus creamy or buttery consistency. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm about to explain it. So I'm just gonna choose a color, a bold color so you can see it. Um, from this gouache set that I have. We'll go with this rosy one. It's kind of like a pale pink. It has a little bit of white undertone in it, so it's kind of like a lighter um, red. So I'm gonna just put that somewhere clean in my palette. And when you have, when you're working with pigment straight from the tube, it's easy to get carried away and slop up way too much pigment on your brush. So that's why it's good to practice this tea to, tea to butter exercise so you can really grasp consistency. So I'm going to grab just a touch of that pigment on my size six brush. That's really damp. I have a lot of water on my size six brush and I'm going to bring it over into a separate well so I can just gradually add more pigment to it to cover this exercise. So when we're talking consistency, there's different, like I said, different effects or techniques that you can achieve with watercolor. And obviously now we're testing out gouache. So in this exercise, the first cons consistency that you want to test out with gouache is going to be tea. So I'm adding a lot of water to just a touch of my rosy pigment or my rosy gouache color. So it's basically just a stain in water. So think about the actual consistency of tea. It's basically just water with a little bit of color to it. So it's not thick at all like a heavy cream or a butter. So with gouache, I would very rarely use this consistency. I would mostly be using gouache for the creamy, more milk to butter ratios of pigment to water ratio. Um, this is more what the beauty of watercolor is for. And so that's why I like to combine in my paintings. I like to combine mixing or using watercolor for some of my base layers or, you know, whatever I'm painting and then add gouache on top or for my layering effect. Um, because the beauty with gouache and that velvety matte finish and the ability to layer is done in the more opaque consistencies like milk, cream, and butter. So for the tea, yes, you can still paint with a lot of water in your gouache like you would with watercolor. However, why not just paint with watercolor? Um, because the consistency of watercolor when it's really light and transparent like this is going to be better and more smooth. Um, and it's gonna bleed a lot better with watercolor than it would with gouache. So if you're asking, okay, well then how do we lighten gouache? The best way to lighten gouache is going to be with adding white paint. So with watercolor, we never really use white paint. We just lighten our colors with um, water, adding more water to make it more transparent or lighter. But with gouache, um, it's a beautiful medium to make your, your, your colors more, more matte, more velvety looking, and then also to layer with them and using white gouache. So to lighten your colors, I would just use white gouache. So now I'm going to go to my coffee consistency. So I'm just adding a touch more pigment. That was a little bit too much. So I'm going to grab a little bit more. Um, it needs to be really liquidy right now. It's not dripping very quickly, it's dripping very slow. So that's more of like a cream consistency because I added too much pigment. So we're gonna make that come back a little bit to coffee. So think about coffee, it's a little bit darker. You can't see through it as much as you could see through tea. And this again is lovely to look at, but if you wanna achieve really smooth, like if you're doing a really broad stroke with this, it might have some inconsistent streakiness in your backgrounds if you do it with gouache um, and you won't have as much ability to do wet and wet like you would with watercolor. So again, I would, in most scenarios when I'm doing these more watery mixtures, I would use watercolor. You can use gouache, but in most of these scenarios I would use watercolor. 
But then we start to get a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna add more pigment, just a touch more pigment to have the consistency of like whole milk. So again, we're not heavy cream or butter yet. Butter is gonna be literally the pigment straight from the tube, so really thick. But with this consistency, the whole milk, we're starting to get more opaque, not really able to see through the pigment, just a little bit maybe. And this is where the beauty of gouache starts to really shine because it's thicker. This is where you're gonna get it drying on your paper to get that velvety matte finish. So the thicker your consistency, the more you're gonna get that velvety look with gouache. So we've got like a whole milk consistency here. So you can see even while it's wet that you can't really see through it. It's kind of got this like a uh, chalky, um, milky look to it. That's what the beauty of gouache is all about. And then obviously the more pigment or the thicker, you know, the more pigment in your pigment to water ratio you have, the thicker it's gonna be. And then obviously using it straight from the, straight from the tube is kind of what gouache is all about. So this would be your cream mixture. So it's kind of like a milky paste consistency on your paper. And then your butter mixture, which is gonna be straight from the tube, is gonna be very thick, like you're spreading butter on toast. You will get some dry brush effect because it's again, it's like spreading butter on toast, especially if you're working on cold press paper uh, versus hot press, which is smoother paper. Which brings me to another good point of what paper to use for gouache. With gouache, I use the same exact paper that I use when I'm painting watercolor. So I use cold press paper. I'll link to the paper that I'm using. Um, and 300 GSM is I or higher is ideal in the weight of paper because you're using water still because it's a water-based medium at times. And so it needs a little bit more weightiness to it. And preference, it all comes down to preference, whether you prefer hot press versus cold press. Because I love working in cold press with watercolor, I keep it the same. Um, with gouache. You might prefer a smoother texture with, with, with your gouache paintings um, to help you layer and not get as much dry brush effect, um, but I, I still prefer cold press. So, and mixed media papers also work well if you're not gonna use any watercolor or any like tea and coffee type consistencies with your gouache um, because that will make the, the paper buckle and warp. So if you're only doing this like buttery cream consistency, then you'll be fine on the not as a high quality watercolor papers. So that is kind of an exercise that will get you really a good grasp on what gouache is all about. Once this even dries, you'll get to see um, what it looks like dried. Obviously it's gonna dry a little bit darker, but the consistency on paper and the opacity on paper. So again, the beauty of gouache is in this range. The beauty of watercolor is in this range and you can still have, you know, obviously beautiful effects and techniques in watercolor in the darker, more opaque range as well. But the main reason you would use watercolor or sorry, gouache is for the opacity, the layering effect and that velvety matte finish. All right. So next let's talk about layering. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, but now that this swatch is mostly dry, it's still cool to the touch, which tells me it's still a little bit wet, but it's gonna be fine. Um, but with layering with gouache, you wanna make sure that you're not layering on top of wet pigment. If you do, it's just gonna be blurry and muddy and it's not gonna have that beautiful, opaque, crisp look to it. So I'm gonna take a different color than this red. Let's do this nighty color is what it's called from the set. It's a beautiful dark blue. I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit cause I know I'm only gonna use just a touch. And when I'm grabbing color that I wanna make sure is like really crisp on top of another color, I just have a slightly damp brush. I wanna make sure that my brush or I'm not adding too much water to my gouache because then it's gonna get a little too thin or transparent and you're gonna lose the opacity or the thickness in the consistency. So I just have a slightly damp brush. It's not dripping with water. I basically just dabbed it in my water, grabbed a thick, you know, creamy, buttery consistency amount, and I can layer on top of this pigment. 
So obviously, depending on what your background layer is and what you're layering with on top is going to depend on how much contrast there is. So obviously, blue and orange are heavy in contrast. They're contrasting colors on the color wheel. And so there's going to be a heavy amount of contrast, but you can layer with white, you can layer with yellow, you can layer with so many different colors. Um, and it really all just depends on what you're painting, what your subject is. Um, but this is a fun way to add texture, to add highlights, to add depth to your florals or your landscapes. Um, and if I were painting, doing a painting only in gouache, um, my base layers would start pretty opaque, um, but more leaning towards this milk consistency. And then I would build from there. But with layering with gouache, a gouache only painting, you are, you can work dark to light. You can work light to dark. Um, but it's all about building on contrast. So with watercolor, you can't really add um, lighter colors or more thin and transparent colors on, on top of your darker colors. So that's why you work light to dark and you wanna make sure that you're saving your lights and you're not covering up all of them so that you save your highlights if you're not using any sort of gouache or way to highlight after the painting or in the final layers. But with gouache, you can, you can do any sort of combination. You can go light to dark, you can go dark to light, um, depending on the consistency that you have on your brush and how well it's gonna stand out on the base layer. So for example, this blue starts to look a little less, a little less um, vibrant or easy to see if I'm layering on a darker red versus a lighter red. And it would be a lot harder to see or a more subtle contrast if I was layering a dark, this blue, for example, with a dark blue on top, because obviously blues like if it was a red blue versus a more blue blue um, and I was layering the red blue on top of the blue blue, they're gonna have less contrast because they're closer together on the color wheel. So you're not gonna see it stand out as much. So it really depends on the effect that you're going for. If you're going for a bright highlight or you want a, a brighter accent or you just want a, sut a subtle shadow color or a subtle nod to a certain color in your florals or whatever it is that you're painting. So for example, Something you can't do with watercolor that is a really nice advantage to using gouache, even in your watercolor paintings, is adding highlights later on in your painting. So obviously with watercolor, you can reserve your highlights and just avoid painting those areas if you're not using any gouache later. Um, but with gouache, you can add the highlights at the end of your painting and layer the lighter colors on top of the darker colors. So because of the opacity and the opaque watercolor nature that it is, it can layer light on dark. And so you can highlight eyeballs. Um, you can layer with lighter colors on top of darker ones later on, um, or, you know, fix little details in lighter sections of your paintings after you've done multiple layers and you wanna clean stuff, stuff up. So that's the amazing thing about gouache that I use gouache almost every time I sit down to paint with watercolor now, especially for details and adding in thicker strokes to my landscapes or my florals because I think it's just such a great way, kind of like a cheat code to not having to do it the hard way of using negative space with watercolor um, instead of doing that, just painting how I would normally paint and instead of using negative space, just adding my white gouache or my yellow gouache or a brighter, lighter color of gouache to layer on top to add highlights. One more thing to note about painting with gouache is when you're mixing colors, you wanna make sure you kind of wanna treat it like you would mix colors with any other medium, medium that's not water-based. So like acrylic or oil, um, you're just, using that creamy pigment straight from the tube and trying not to add too much water in your mixtures because the more water you're gonna add, the less you're gonna achieve that creamy, buttery consistency. Obviously you can add water to a separate mixture of that color that you mixed up if you do want a more milky or tea or coffee uh, ratio or consistency, however, the beauty of watercolor is that opacity, that velvet finish. So you wanna make sure to not add too much water 
when you're adding or mixing colors, which is kind of like the natural feeling that most watercolor painters do is adding a lot of water to their brush to pick up pigment and to mix it together. So it's kind of some training that you have to do if you're used to painting with watercolor. So just make sure that you're keeping in mind as you're when you're mixing colors that you're not adding too much water because then again, when you go to paint, it might be too thin or transparent and you won't be able to get it back to that opaque look without having to add more and more paint, which would most likely be too much paint. So that's a nice color and the consistency is very creamy, which is what we want. So it's gonna be a great color of gouache to layer. It's just a slightly yellower, more yellow color than this rosy color that I tested out. Um, so if you wanna mix colors with gouache, the beauty is again, that consistency of creamy, buttery consistency. So you can layer and add highlights and depth. So try not to add too much water to your mixtures when you're mixing up a few different colors together to create other colors. So for example, I'm mixing up this blue that kind of had a warm undertone and then the red that came in the gouache set. So it's making a brown and it's making a brown because the blue had a warmish undertone, but it's a brown purple. You see kind of like the purple is an undertone at this point, but it has that consistent or that, that undertone. And this is a milky consistency. So if I wanted to this to be thicker, then I would grab more pigment. If I liked that hue, then I would grab more pigment in equal ratios. Or if I wanted it to be a little bit more blue, then I would grab just blue and mix that up. And now we've got like a slate blue gray, which is really lovely, a very nice color. And the consistency is on point. So do a few exercises, obviously the tea to butter exercise, but mixing up colors and seeing how you like, how you like it. It's different than watercolor slightly. Um, and you wanna think about consistency because the consistency is really, really important in this range with gouache. And um, mixing up colors is gonna kind of be slightly different than watercolor, but it's not totally confusing and weird. It's very, very fun and I love this medium. So again, if I wanted this color, but I wanted a lighter version, I'm not gonna add water to it because that's gonna give me the tea and coffee look. And I, so I still want it to be opaque for layering. So all I'm gonna do is add white gouache. I'm very low on my light gouache, but I think we can squeeze out some if this isn't. Squeeze it out, bloop. That's why we wanna make sure with our gouache that we put the caps back on so it doesn't get super dry and difficult to get out. So lightening with gouache, adding that thick buttery white to my bluish slate gray until I get the hue that I want. Obviously the more white, the lighter it will become. And we have that beautiful slate gray undertone. This is even a little too buttery. So I'm just gonna dip just a little bit in my water so it can spread a little bit easier on my paper. This is gonna be a beautiful color to layer on top of my darks with. So it's gonna stand out and be opaque on top of those darker colors even my reds. And on top of the lighter colors, you'll still see it. There will be less contrast, but you'll still see it. So depending on the effect that you want or what you're painting will determine when you use those lighter colors. But again, lightning gouache is done with white gouache in order to keep the opacity and to be able to layer and you get the, these really creamy, beautiful colors.
So the next thing, next and final thing to talk about with gouache painting is what brushes to use. So we covered paper, we covered technique, consistency. And when I'm painting with gouache, even if it's a, whether it's a painting that has watercolor and gouache or it's just gouache, I am going to be painting with the same brushes that I use for watercolor. So just like watercolor, you want something that's flexible, that's snappy. You don't really need to focus on the ability of holding water as much as you do with watercolor, because again, you're not painting with these really transparent, thinner colors. Um, or more watery colors as much. So for your gouache, you just want something that's flexible, that's snappy, because I'm gonna be painting in the same style with gouache, like for example, when I'm painting a leaf. So because it's still like similar to watercolor, I'm gonna to want to be able to bend my brush and move it around my shapes like my leaves and flowers like it's bouncing and more flexible or snappy. So I'm always gonna prefer a brush like my Princeton Heritage 4050 series that's more flexible and not as stiff as some other brushes. Obviously I didn't wait for it to dry so it's getting a little blurry, but with watercolor you would not be able to add lighter colors on top and have it be as visible because they're transparent so love adding those details with gouache. Even just a hint of blue, less contrast than a light and dark. So now if you wanna put all of that together, all the things that we talked about today and how to paint with gouache, uh, then check out my painting that I did with gouache. The lively landscape painting that I did on my YouTube channel, we'll link to it in the description and in this video so you can check it out and put all of this fun stuff together with gouache. There you have it. If this is your first time painting with gouache or maybe your fifth or 500th, I would love to know what your favorite thing to paint with gouache is in the comments below. If this video was helpful, maybe if you have some extra tips that I didn't think of, add them to the comments below because I'm sure other viewers would love to read about them as well. And I'll see you in the next video.